competition of secret celebrities. Oh. Just want to touch base. Paired up with an expert. Boom! What? <laughs> and a classic car. No hand! Their mission to scar Britain for antiques. My office. Now! The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no easy ride. Oh. Who will find a hidden gem? Like that. Who will take the biggest oh. risk? This could end in disaster. Will anybody follow expert advice? But I love this. How would you buy something you're not going to use? There will be worthy winners and valiant losers. No, I don't want to shake hands. Put your pedal to the metal. Uh, let me get out of first gear. This is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. Today, we're in Hampshire, in the company of an English cricketing legend and his comedy sidekick. Indicate! Oh, why? I don't want to go... lights! Look, OK, I'll, I'll indicate. So let's go right. Yes, it's renowned batsman David Gower and TV presenter Nick Hancock. These two sporting nuts appeared together in the TV panel show They Think It's All Over and have remained firm friends ever since. Nick started out as a stand-up comedian before turning his hand to presenting on TV and radio. Whilst David scored over 8,000 test match runs in his career, one of the highest scores by an English player. The elegant batsman is behind the wheel of a 1965 Ford Anglia. It's bringing back some memories, too. This vintage gem is what my father drove across Africa in 1963 and put it on a boat, crossed the equator with it, took it back to Kent, and then many, many years later, I got to the age of 17, learned to drive badly. Really? This same car? So this car did all that, survived all that, and it took me about five weeks to put into a hedge in Leicestershire. It didn't survive that. <laughs> Let's hope you have better luck with this one. Helping the gents on their intrepid antiques adventure in this 1960s Sunbeam Tiger are seasoned auctioneers Charlie Ross and Phil Searle. So how's your cricket terminology, Roscoe? Absolutely spot on. What about your Googlies? Are they all right? My Googly. Do you know what a Googly is? Absolutely, yeah. What is a Googly? An off break. Yes. Bowled with a leg break action. Oh, do you know it's something I've never had in my armory, a Googly? No, no. I no. bowl leg breaks, not like this, but I've never been able to bowl a Googly. You and me both, Chief. Assuming, are you going to work with David? Oh, I, I've got to, because I'm left handed and he's left handed. Oh, right, OK. You know, we could put on a lot of runs together. David Gower is just a complete legend of the game. He was certainly one of his generation's greatest batsmen. Yeah. And he could well have been one of the greatest left-handers of all time, really. Yeah. Nick, I mean, I'm just worried what I'm going to talk to him about, because he was a Cambridge University boy, wasn't he? He's a bit brighter than you. bit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> Starting out from the cathedral city of Salisbury, our celebrities and experts will take a dignified drive around Hampshire before heading south to the coast. Then, in a northeast, the direction for an auction in Sidcup. What, what is this? Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, you can. Hello, Hi. good morning. It's been so long. Oh, God. Hang this on, Liz. Is... How are you? Hello, hello, hello. David, I'm glad to be out there, to I have to say. It's Does just... he drive like he bats? Yes. Nick, yes. good to see you. Uh, Mr Ross. Very good to see you. How are you? We chatted in the car and, and, yeah. and Charlie said it was going to be the talented left-handers <laughs> against us. Am I with you? Oh, yeah, you're driving. Am I? Yeah, jump oh. in. Okay. Jump in. Can I see all I see? Last one to the <laughs> shop is a sissy. <laughs> with £400 to spend, our teams better get cracking. Ooh, I like that. That was cool, wasn't that it? Technique is trying to put the seat belt on. Chaps. Now I know, Nick, that you are an, you've got an avid interest in sport, haven't you? Oh yes. So does that transform into collecting sports memorabilia and stuff? I have. I mean, that whole sporting memorabilia thing. I'd be led by you, but I think you need a you need a specialist knowledge. You're not going to happen upon these top top things for no money. Well, so, so what's going to float your boat? I, well, I, yeah, I'm approaching this, Phil. That, that, basically, I'm going to be led by you because 
I know nothing, and you know nothing. Well, I've heard something. No, no, not much, mate. <laughs> well, what about antiques? Are yeah. you an antique lover, um, or...? Yeah, you but know... I, I'm not, not a great expert. I've collected bits of furniture over the years. Have you? Uh, but I like things like... What I do collect is a bit of art, sculpture. Yes. Um, but from modern artists. Yes. Uh, Are you naturally competitive? Well, naturally, yes, but not at all costs. No. And what about his lordship, Lord Gower? Well, do you know, I think the big problem for David is not going to be the fine objects, because he lives his life amongst fine objects. Yeah. The problem for him is going to be shopping, because I don't think well, he's he ever someone, done... He has someone do it for he him. He has a man that goes and does his shopping. Well, he's got one today. But he's that's Roscoe, true. yeah. He has. We're sharing the first shopping destination. Both teams' cars are pointed to that cathedral city and Salisbury Antiques Market. So, let the game commence. <laughs> How are you? We, we thought we'd lost you. With more than 15 dealers over three floors, there's plenty on offer. How competitive are you? Do you want to win? It'd be nice to win. I'd like to buy some nice things. Best get looking, then. Now, where are David and Charlie? No. 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 <laughs> you get a much better sound if you hold it up. Steady on. Service! Do you think this would be me? Oh, I don't. Oh, God, that's like a smoking would jacket, you... isn't it? It's more Henry Blofeld than you, I would have thought. But, um... That is very smart. Good point, <laughs> but... Do you think if somebody saw David Gower walking up and down a sale room in that, they would be forced to bid? Hello. What's going on here? Synthetic hiding. Oh, it's, ch it's, it's, sorry, it's childish, isn't it? It is. Yeah, let's do it. Hiding things from the opposition isn't quite cricket, gents. <laughs> Charlie's lost his celebrity, but what's he found? It was quite interesting. A model of the Queen Mary. David. Yeah. Have Charlie. a look at this. This is, uh, I would think, about 1950s original right. box model. Of the Queen Mary. All 12 decks removable. Well, that's what intrigued me. Two little nuts on the top here. Right. And it reveals each uh, of the decks, which I think is quite interesting. First class, which you'd be in. Does it reveal second, what's been going on below well, decks? It, 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 I just think it's an interesting thing. And then it's now there's. Oh, oh no. It's just gone down in value. Uh, Gower. Sorry, excuse me. I'll get it. I'll see if I. Don't, I think it's an interesting don't object. Don't lose the bits. Oh, it's a which really way, interesting which educational. Which way were the what's it's The facing? funnels go to the back. That's it. Sloping backwards. Well, it's fun. Isn't I it? just it's, think it's, it's, it's a it's, fun object and something that people would buy yeah. at a price. Well, you know, um, Chad Valley Company Limited. Well, yeah, yeah, infamous, good, good infamous. maker. Infamous. Original with instructions. Original box. Yeah. Um, good paintwork. You know, it's in good order. British brand Chad Valley started making toys in the early 19th century from its factory in the West Midlands, unsurprisingly in a valley near a stream called the Chad. What's it worth? 40 quid? Do you know, that's exactly what I thought. You're a past Is master that an, of a value. A lucky early guess. No, no, no. I, I think that's a very accurate guess. I yeah. would think an estimate in a sale room would be 30 to 50, 40 to 60. Right, so, so I can have a word with whoever's in charge it, of having a word it's with something you. something that I think's got a bit of right, mileage. Okay. Let's have a look. Stand by, Rose. Hi, just want to see if we can negotiate on this. We've, we found this. What's, quite, what's the price well, of that? I've probably hidden that. Um, I think it says 30 quid. Maybe, maybe I've misread that. Uh, 60 pounds. Right. Well, I'm allowed to take off 10 percent. Um, so if, I, if I'm pushing it, I'm going to say £50 for cash. If you're pushing it, what if I well, was pushing I mean, it? Well, what are you suggesting? Well, I reckon... I mean, my initial thought was about 40 quid. So I would have started... I'm, I'm going to be honest with you and say I was thinking 40 quid, I was going to start with 30. What about... And we have checked the screws, they do work, we admit that. The screws okay. do work, but not these ones at the back, so there's no propulsion unit. What about 45? 40? Oh, just do 40 would be lovely. Okay. Sure. I'd much rather you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. First purchase of the road trip, a Chad Valley Queen Mary model with a key chart in its original box for £40.
Now, what are the other two up to? See, Nick, I love these, look. See, this is the Oxford University... Oh, and Cambridge University Cambridge. relay teams, 1935. Yeah, relay teams. But the thing for me is that's 1935, four years later, outbreak of war. Yeah. Do you know what? They all look like fighter pilots, yeah. don't they? It, it, I, know, I know it's the haircuts and everything, but it's just... You can imagine them yeah. all being involved. Is there a Hancock? Yeah, there is a Hancock. There, bit of there. there you are. I really like that. Dealer Pete, you're needed. Um, well, I could, um, I could make a phone call and see what the best it is. You've got a picture of, and it's Oxford University with £45 on it, and we were wondering what the very best price would be. Um, Philip. All oh, right, and she wants to speak to you, is that all right? Oh, yeah, of course. There you go. Absolutely right. Hot blimey. Hello. This is the relay team of Oxford and Cambridge. The one that we'd like is 20 or 25 pounds worth for us. All right, my love, I say 25 just for the one. OK, bye. She's been more than generous. What I suggest that we do, Pete, is if you don't mind, if you could hold that for us. OK. Certainly until the other team have left the building. <laughs> don't worry, they're busy with some serious browsing. You've got do, enough, you a, you? do you need a hat? It's hot out there. Are you thinking more of this sort of thing? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Do you think that's the hat I should be having? Is it expensive? For nine quid, I will buy that hat personally for you. You won't. <laughs> that will long keep as, the sun off. As long as you promise to walk around Salisbury in that. I promise to walk right, around Salisbury. Done deal. Mr Gower. <laughs> gentleman. <laughs> what a gentleman. And with nothing else to tempt them, David and Charlie head off. I must say, I'm quite pleased with my present. <laughs> <laughs> but have Nick and Phil made a decision? We're probably going to go with the photograph, which I think you kept for us. Uh, and tempted as we were, that might be it. So that's thirty pounds there. Okay, thank you. All Lovely. And you I will take Shall I be the porter? Yeah, you be the, yeah. I'll be the porter. Yeah. There you go. Thank, thank you very much indeed. Well. Cheers. Thank you. Well, we've left ourselves some work to do. Though, Absolutely. Sort of... Don't worry, chaps. That's one all so far. You're not out yet. You might even have some time for some countryside pursuits. Nick's presented many programmes over the years, from great railway journeys to fishing all over the world, a particular pastime that's his passion. So why particularly fishing? You know, I, 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 I like to be out and about. You get to see some beautiful parts of the country, um, but I just I quite like mucking around in rivers. So you would uh, try to the salmon fish? But when I do, but I do other fishing as well. But I, like, I really enjoy that because I love rivers. They're heading to Sutton, Scotney, and the banks of the River Test to learn about a man who led the way for a new type of fishing, and one that became globally popular. I'm looking forward to this. Yes, not as much as I am. Really? Yep. Are you up for this? Oh, I'm so up for doing some fishing. Let's go. I want to go fishing. Come on, Mr Hancock. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm desperate to come. Let's go. This is a man Let's excited. Go. Let's go. Let's go. Fly fishing was first recorded in 3000 BC by the Macedonians. The sport has been richly chronicled over the centuries, but it was one man, Frederick Halford, and his 19th century book that has had the greatest influence on fly fishing around the world. To find out how Orford's new approach changed fishing forever, they're meeting fly fishing coach Simon Cooper, who has been wading in these waters for 40 years. Simon. Nick, how good to you? see you. Right, so, oh, good good to see you. To you look the part, good don't you? Oh, hey. well, you know. It was at this very spot that Orford put pen to paper. These are famously chalk streams, and chalk streams, why are they special particularly? They're very special because the water actually comes out of the chalk aquifers. So it's always gin clear, it's always 51 degrees. I like the analogy already. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can drink it if you like, oh, it won't yeah. have any effect. <laughs> and it's just perfect for fly fishing and brown trout. 
So you're casting to a specific fish and, and brown trout are territorial, so you know they're likely to stay there. Exactly, yes. Right. I mean, if you're a brown trout, you'll be, you'll be born, live and die within 50 yards. Really? Oh, yeah. They're very, they're very slothful. Yeah. But, but you, sure. <laughs> I could be a brown trout. As we were born <laughs> and lived and a, will I'm probably die within 50 miles. Before Halford's book, anglers fished with the wet fly fishing technique where the fly sits under the water. So how exactly did Halford change fishing? Up to then, fishing was a fairly random affair. You were just sort of putting something on the water and hoping that there was a fish in the vicinity and it would actually come and grab your fly. Mm. But what Halford was doing, his belief was that you should identify a fish that was rising, coming to the surface and take a fly, then identify what particular insect it was taking tie an imitation of that insect on the end of your fly line, cast it to the fish, and then catch it. Entomologist Halford devoted his life to the development of a definitive series of flies. He spent hours comparing his fake flies to preserved naturals, compiling 33 illustrations to publish in his book. So the basic message of the book is match the hatch. Yeah, I mean, that's the perfect phrase to describe what we're doing. I mean, today, height of the mayfly season, Duffer's fortnight, we're going to be... Just, I'll just what tell you what, Duffer's mean? fortnight, it means if Duffer. you can't catch a fish this fortnight because the mayfly are everywhere, you are a Duffer. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck to me. So, this is what we're going to be fishing around. This is a the mayfly. There are actually are insects flying around today. Yeah. That look There's just one. like I that. I can see one. See there, there next to the tree. Look, 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 look. So, can these old duffers actually catch anything? And all you need to do is just up. And forward. down. Okay, up so. and down. That's it. Okay, that's okay then. And just let it, just let that one just drift for a moment and now try again. Up and down. That's good. Not really, but... Um, move, move down, see if you can get this move boy up. here. Right, don't cast for a minute. Doing really well. Doing really, really, really well. well. This is that bit, yeah. Woohoo! Nice cast, well done. He's patronising you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you see the fish moving under it? No, I can't even see the fly, let alone the fish. <laughs> if he falls in, I've got to sit next to him in that car for the next day. Naughty. How are you getting on, Nick? <laughs> I've got my trousers wet, I've frightened a lot of fish, and I haven't done it properly. Hawford's dry fly approach did provoke controversy with the traditional fishing set, with wet subsurface fly fishing being more popular from the 1930s. But there's no denying Hawford's techniques continue to have huge influence over the sport today. I'm just wondering if Simon's got a spare pair of trousers anywhere. I mean, one of the things, if you, if you can't enjoy fishing when you haven't caught, you shouldn't really be fishing, should you? And that's very lucky for me, because that's generally the case. Alfred never did this. He'd be turning in his grave. We'll leave Nick and Phil messing about on the river. Where are the other two? This is a competition between you and Nick. Oh, yes. You know, we're here to, I gotta say, help and advise, yeah. but damn that. You buy what you want. That'd be interesting to see what we find. I mean, we've got £400. Yeah. And uh, my view is let's spend. Well, They've headed into the North Wessex Downs in the village of Pusey. Rather splendid premises. Their next shopping destination has a very eastern feel. Is this bringing back memories of tours of yesteryear? The only thing I ever brought back for me was rugs. Oh, right. So they're very easy to fold up and put in cricket bags. You got rid of all the cricket <laughs> kit, brought back your rugs. Textile printing block. Pretty. Okay. Do you think they come free with the basket? I oh, know they don't. <laughs> Forty-eight pounds. Just need a few no, white, just need a few white, few, few white t-shirts, and you can set up a business. What a good idea! Fabulous pictures. Look at this man. What's this? Nice, but not Indian. Mr. Gower. Mr. Ross. Come here. Instant. See. English. Ah. Antique. Plate camera. 1870? Ah. 
It's the sort of thing they used to take photographs of the old touring teams before your time. Right. Go on, take it. Yeah. We have a large flash. London maker, box, right. lens. Hope to find a signature on the lens. What do we need right. on a lens? Hmm? Name. We need a name. A name, OK. Just there we are. Do you know what you're doing with it? Dalmire. I don't know the name Dalmar, but London right. maker, and it's got a number on it. So from that number, you would be able to date it. Right. 1870 or whatever. Really? Because uh, it looks, actually, to be, if it's, it's that old, it does look in... It's remarkable it's condition. It's in very good condition, It's yeah. fabulous condition. That, these, I assume, is its original box. That brass banding on there. Fabulous. I am extremely excited about this. What's it worth? I would, I would have an absolutely no experience. I tell you, this, this wheel thing works. Well, I mean, if you split that up as a valuation, yeah, the box itself must be fifty to eighty quid. The lens must be forty to sixty quid. This box, the holding box, must be worth fifty quid. Got to be, I would think, two to three hundred pounds worth. That's one possible, though likely to cost them more than half their budget. Anything else? What are you looking at over there? Um, oh, the, well, there's just a sort what of is it? trinketry I'd call it. Wait, this, I saw this here, this is a tiffin box or a lunch box. Tiffin carriers, or darbas, are tiered lunch boxes, which first became popular in colonial India around the 1880s. So that's in the same sort of vein. Um, Keep the chapatis warm. Yep. How much? Well, on the ticket, £75. Time for a spot of bartering, he thinks. Richard! Richard, you quite like your chapati box. <laughs> <laughs> what we really like is this I love. camera. Well, it's... You know, I walked in here and, of course, it's different to everything else here cos it's English. But it did come from India. Did it? Well, you know, I said that to David. I said, I wondered if so those clever. wonderful pictures on the wall of those fabulous Maharaj sort of people... Yeah. ..that was taken with one of well, these, probably... obviously, somebody quite wealthy in India bought it. You bought in it in India? Century. Hmm. How fascinating. Yeah. Do you know uh, what I'm asking for it? Uh, uh, no. No, you'll have to tell us. I've got 340 on it. 340? Mm. Okay. I'm just pulling well, back on your joystick. Five. If you could do 210, we might have a deal. Two done. ten, two ten, and we're done. Well, that might. are you are no, you I'm happy with that, done. Richard? Yep, are you Absolutely. sure? Yep. So I, th I think it's yeah. well yeah. worth the money. Thank you. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Well worth the money. The nineteenth-century plate camera has cost this pair well over half their starting budget. But is that seventy-five pound chapati box still a contender? I quite like these things. I mean, yeah. we've spent a lot of time in India over the years, but we need to come down because. Well, we've done the deal on the camera. Yeah. So I am going to be quite generous. What about we start talking in the region of uh, £45? Pounds? Um, tell you what, I'll, 25 and whatever I can find in my pocket for change, you can have the change. OK, here we are. What have we got? OK, here we are. So that okay. adds up to 150, 70, 90, just, just a couple of quid's worth, isn't it? So that's 27 quid. You know you, you, know you want it. Go on. 27, Go thank on. you. Done. Good. Yeah. Good man. Thanks, David. Thank you. Rose. Okay, so give you that. Okay, you have another couple of those. Yep. And we're done. And we're done. Mr. God. Good, eh? Good deal. Right, nice. a very generous yeah, disc sees them leave with the brass chapati box for £27 and the camera for 210 Snap that. <laughs> ah! Carry on, Mr. Come on, quick, 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 come on. <laughs> and so ends a very successful first day of shopping for David and Charlie. Mind your back. Yes, it's fine for you. Come on! Yes, sorry. I think old Jeeves there needs a bit of a rest, don't you? Bless his heart. Sorry, Mr. Gower, sir. Sorry, sir. Nighty night. Good morning, good morning. It's great to stay up late. Good morning, good morning. What's the mood with our celebrities today? How was your first day? I, I felt very timid. I suddenly, I, you know, it's I... not I, you. In, in my case, Charlie found something. He went, hang on, have a look at this. This is interesting. And you go, ah, oh, fantastic. You know, it helps someone with the, the practice die. And did our experts enjoy their company yesterday? 
How did you get on, Roscoe? It was wonderful. Was it? Absolutely wonderful. Driving around the countryside and shopping with one of the legends of the game. One of my heroes of all time. Do you know that's what Gower said to me? <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the highlights for me yesterday was seeing Hancock in the middle of a river with his trousers went, still on. He went fishing, didn't he? Barefoot, you? no yeah. wellies, no socks, no shoes, trousers on, up to his thighs in water. Well, let's hope today goes swimmingly. <laughs> David and Charlie are well on their way with three items in the old bag. The Chad Valley model of the Queen Mary, the 19th century camera and the chipati box, as you do. <laughs> Leaving them £123 to spend today. While well, Nick and Phil have only bought one thing so far, the 1935 frame photograph of Oxford and Cambridge University relay teams. There's a handcuff. Yeah, there's a handcuff. There, there you are means they have a whopping £375 still to spend. Cheers, thank you. Oh, look, 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 look at that. I bet this is the first time a Ford Anglia has ever been seen in front of this house. <laughs> and the last. Oh, well bravo. Done. Simon. Marvellous. David's very keen to get off. He's left the engine running. We but, uh, we've, we've got a lot of items to get, so we need to go. We've done our shop. Really? Um, I'd like to say good luck, but don't feel like it. Really? OK, we'll get on with Someone's it. Someone's had their it's porridge this morning. The truth is, Mr Ross, you've been <laughs> under surveillance for quite some time. <laughs> Bye! Bye. Oh. OK, old boy. Good luck. And they're off. So... There's something deep inside me that's intimidated by Roscoe and by Garrett, yeah. and I think it's because they're posh. No, and there's one other thing as well. What's that? Ability. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Posh Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Posh and better than us. Yeah, uh, and that sort of... Yeah, you're right, intimidating. Anyway... I, I, don't, you know, do you not feel that we're the plucky outsiders? <laughs> yeah, well, no-one expects us to win, so it'll no. be nice if we do. No, least of all us. Yeah, well, yeah, we have... Yeah, what's in it? Better to travel in expectation than arrive in disappointment, yes, isn't it? Yes, yes. This morning, David and Charlie will start their shopping in Hampshire's largest city, Southampton. We're going to buy two more things, David. Right. OK. We've got 123 quid left. Yeah. And we're going to a shop that specialises in nautical things. Right. Yeah, the next port of call is cobwebs. Pull her in here, Gar. I'll do my best. Right. OK. Off to you, go. Thank oh, you. Okay. I wouldn't want to do the Monte Carlo rally in that, really. <laughs> Good morning, Peter. Good morning. It's time to divide and conquer. David? Uh, Ross? I Ross? found an old radio. Bakelite. It's German manufacture. This 1950s radio was made by the German factory Graz, who, after the Second World War, specialised in making radios and televisions. But it's in the real Art Deco style. I love it. Right, if we take one of those off... Yeah. I think that would on be... On the right. assumption one of those is superfluous. Yeah. Mind you, I might get a good price for you if it is. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Cheap at half the price. Thirty-five pounds. Peter, is there, is there much flexibility in this? There's a bit of flexibility. Yeah, I've uh, got it here. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I could probably do it for thirty. But the thing is, I've I've got the cash. Oh, yeah. Okay. And when when I say that, there's not much of it. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just nudge it down a little bit, please? 25, 25. £10 discount? Very kind. Grazie. Yeah. Yes, we could. I, okay. I think that's fair. OK, thank you very much indeed. That's one purchase done and dusted. But something caught David's eye earlier. I'm assuming it's a navigation light. It is, yeah. Um, from... <coughs> oh, it's quite heavy. It's copper. It's yeah. 1930s. Uh, it still has its original burner inside. 
It's, it's a lovely condition. What I also like about it is the motto, or whatever it is, not, not under, under command. command. Is that very appropriate? That rings a bell with me, <laughs> that's for sure. I like to, I've always tried to be not under command. What are we looking at? Um, oh, that look, blows I've, the, that blows I've already button. reduced it. 140. Yeah, no, 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 no. That, was, that was a misprint. With £25 spent on the radio, David has just £98 left in his pocket. 95. 95. Yeah, and that, that is it. Is it? Yep. Well, that's generous. Not even sort of 90 or no. 85 or... No. <laughs> 95. 95. Okay, 95. Thank you, David. What a successful visit. A Bakelite radio and the 1930s lantern for a total of £120. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Very much indeed. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you for entertaining us with your wonderful shop. And we're off to make a profit. Good. Good work, team. Cars over here. Meanwhile, Nick and Phil are in the New Forest and on the way to the town of Lindhurst. We sort of set our stall out to try and avoid traditional antiques, haven't we? Yes. With our one lot that we've bought. But yes, £25, we've got £375 left. And I'm thinking we just offer 375 quid for the first thing we see. That's one way of doing it. They're off to Lindhurst Antique Centre. Focus. 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 Hello. Hi. Hi, hi. Hi. I'm Jan. Nice to meet you, Jan. Jan. And who's this? Harry. Harry. Harry, how are you? I'll do Hello, Harry. Nick. Hi, Welcome to Lindhurst. Jason has been trading from here for five years and has accumulated a varied stock. So what will take Nick and Phil's fancy? Nick, have a look at these, look. How the world's changed. That's a marrow scoop. Well, it's that vegetable marrow or no, bone, no, no. bone, bone marrow. marrow. You would use that for scooping out the marrow out of the spine. And our Georgian forefathers mazed bits of silver so you could eat this stuff. Yeah. Bonkers, isn't it? it? Is. Moving on. We said about cricket bats, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh look at this. It's a David Gower Grey Nichols bat. And how much do they want us to take that? They're going to pay us to take it away, are they? It's 29 quid. Yeah, what impresses me more than anything else is the signature is joined up writing. Yes, yeah, someone had done it for him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think Perhaps you had a man I, to do it. I think we should buy it. Yeah, I do, because I think that will do. Let's see. Do you know what? I think this might be back for... Well, you're thinking that it's going to make less than the purchase price, don't oh, you? Oh, yes. I'm kind of thinking that with him in the auction, it might much make more. Time for a bit of haggling. Now, we've seen this um, rather lovely bat. You've got it marked up for £29. That's correct. What, what's the best you could do? Well, how about I said £22, Nick? <sighs> because it has David Gower's name on it, and I respect and, and let's face it, love that man, <laughs> it's marked up at 29 I'm going to give you 30. No, what are you doing? No, 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 no. <laughs> give me 30 on the ground Did you stat. Program? Shake my hand. Oh, yeah, I will do. I will do. <laughs> oh, no, 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 look. What are you look, doing? Look, look, look. This the more is... money we pay for it, the more respect we have for David, but also the more it will lose and the more that will knock his confidence. I like that a lot. Thank you very much. But you've got to say you chose it. Oh, great. Come Thanks on. very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Well, at least they've bought something. That's all right, isn't it? While Nick and Phil make their way to their last shop, David and Charlie are done with buying and are en route to Portsmouth. But you've got a bit of a naval connection somewhere in the family. My Uncle John, he was commanding during the Second World War. He was off, off the beaches for D-Day. Conscription, National Service, yeah. you know, had a bit of a charmed life, really. Oh, yes. A significant naval port for centuries, Portsmouth has the world's oldest dry dock, where there's currently a warship with a fascinating story to tell. David and Charlie are here to learn about HMS Warrior and how, in the mid-19th century, the modern world of engineering developed this new terror of the seas. 
the ultimate demonstration of Britain's industrial might and naval power. Shipwright Bob Daubeny knows the story. Good afternoon. Good well, afternoon. Time. Commissioned in 1859 to counter the French battleship La Gloire, HMS Warrior was the brainchild of the first Lord of the Admiralty, Sir John Somerset Packington. She was the most powerful, heaviest built battleship of her time when she was launched. So you'll see she has masts and funnels. She's in that transition between sail and steam, the early days of power. She was capable of 17 and a half knots with a mix of steam and sail. She could get 14 and a half knots with just steam. Yeah. She could get a good 13 knots with just the sail. With France seen as a real threat, the British Navy were determined to make a stronger, faster, more powerfully armed ship that was superior to the French vessel. What was the comparison between La Gloire, the French ship, and Warrior then? In terms of size, efficiency, capacity? We were a good um, two-thirds bigger than, than La Gloire, so the English decided Let's make an iron one. We'll put similar armour on the outside. We'll add a bit of teak in between, 18 inches, to act as a shock absorber. So she was so strong, so sturdy, nothing would touch it in its day. So we were concerned at the time that the French might be invading at any time. It was Napoleon III was, was playing up a bit. <laughs> I like that and, fresh. <laughs> and there's always this niggle between the two of us, isn't yeah. there? Warrior was the embodiment of the Industrial Revolution at sea. La Gloire had been a crushing blow to national pride, a wake-up call to the British Navy and a reminder that the French threat was still alive and well. So the Admiralty upped the ante. Warrior was fitted with artillery bigger and more powerful than any other warship ever built. All aboard. Would you like to come this way? Yep. Not this way. So here we have one of the Armstrong 110-pounders, one of the most powerful weapons of its day. You've also got rifled barrels, so the projectile that's fired spins and has much greater accuracy. Yeah. How many of these on board? We've got 10 of these, eight down below, two on the upper deck. This is the bow chaser, there's a stern chaser. So if you're chasing, being followed. She can fire from four different positions. Gosh. The enemy just haven't got a chance. No, they haven't. And this will shoot two and a half miles. Two and a half miles. Though on the upper deck, because you can get a much greater trajectory, yes. it's possible it would have gone further. Despite all the technology available at the time, wasn't there a bit of a problem I hear with the launching? Yes. You've got to be looking at one of the coldest winters on record in 1860. And when she was actually supposed to launch, she was frozen to the slipway. They had full thought of this. They'd lit braziers below, just doesn't generate that much heat. So when they'd actually got everything freed, they brought in hydraulic rams to try and push her down the slipway. They even got all of the men on board. You look at the width of her, they were running from one side to the other, all in time with each other, to get a rocking motion, just to try and break her free so she would slide down the slipway and out into the Thames. Oh. And they succeeded. Oh. <laughs> Come on, go. Come on, go. Come on. One more. <laughs> going to run four. It's unheard of. We haven't shifted yet. <laughs> Britain had yet again established its naval supremacy. No other ship in the world could compete. But Warrior never fired a shot in anger. She acted as the ultimate deterrent, and that's why she was, for a time, the supreme ship of the seas and a supreme demonstration of Britain's industrial power. Back in the Sunbeam, Nick and Phil are motoring their way to South Sea to splash the last of their cash. They're heading to Palmitters, a shop which prides itself on stocking weird and unusual antiques. Ian, where are you? Should suit these two, then. Welcome to South Sea. How are you, mate? All right. How are you? Very this good. This is time Nick. Nice to see you. With £345 left to spend, they'd better get a shifty on. 
I reckon we need a plan here. It's perhaps a bit of silver or something. Yes. How does it work? Well, it's, I always find it's best to take your glasses off. Yeah, what a fine idea. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Hold it right close to the thing. Oh, yeah, I've got it. Got it? Yeah. It's Birmingham. Yeah, Brummagem. Anchor. Oh, great, are you? Got to focus here. I know, it's I know. All I about know. profit. This is all about profit. Is there any profit in these Regency style cornice pieces? I know that somebody would have a place for these and would really know what to do with them. And I like them because there doesn't seem to be much damage. Quite the expert now, aren't you, Nick? You know, you could use it. You could use it um, above windows as a pelmet. You could use it as a mantelpiece. You could use it as. F on the floor, you, you know, you could use it to frame something. I think they were made as a permit for a bed. OK. Ticket price on those is £120. They're one possible. Anything else? This. Oh, and a real. I quite like, you've got, you've also got, there, that's a nice little one. I'm going to get my glasses out and have a proper look at this. It's an old cop. It's lovely. And it's got... I'm seeing if it's got a silk line on it. Is that the original? Yeah. That's definitely possible. I'm going to have to calm down. I'm getting overexcited, like a child in a toy shop. Something else has caught Nick's eye. These are good. What's that? The uh, ship heads. The, the... Oh, yeah, yeah. There's one there. There's, there's one behind you, actually. Oh, yeah. In times gone by, figureheads embodied the spirit of a ship and were originally believed to placate the gods of the sea and ensure a safe passage. They're, they're from a hotel in Bournemouth. And how much are they? A lot of money. Uh, 500 each. Some things are better just to look at, aren't they, yeah. really? Well, don't think about it. Keep thinking, then. Who's that on the shelf? Is that Sir Thomas More? I think it is Sir Thomas More. OK. I don't know whether Sir Thomas More is a big name in Sidcup, but we, you know, we can find out. Asking price for this bust of Sir Thomas More is £120. He served as a key councillor to Henry VIII and was famously beheaded for refusing to accept the king as head of the Church of England. Time to make some decisions. I really like, which I know are very expensive, the two plaster ship head type decorative things. I'd like you to tell us what the price is for the ship's head that's not a ship's head, the bed frame that's not a bed frame. It's a cornice, Phil. And the bust. So what's the what's the what's the absolute finish on those then? How much you got? Uh, we have 345 English pounds. Um. Which I think is on the way. And, but with a fair win from your good self, we might get there. Oh, I could do 340 quid and leave you with a fiver to spend in the pub. Four? All three items. Ian has been incredibly kind. That's the ship's figurehead for £165, the Sir Thomas More bust for £110, and the decorative Regency cornice for £65. It's th I promise you it's 340. They can get it if you want. Marvellous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. I think you swam the channel there, I really <laughs> do. But Nick isn't finished shopping just yet. What is he up to? No good by the looks of it. This is not an antique shop. I don't know where Hancock's got to. It's about the fibre. It's nice here, quite nice. Well, I spent the fiver. What did you do? I did a deal. I have pulled. <laughs> and what we're going to do... Beach cricket set. Beach cricket set. And what we'll do is take the bat out, yeah. put Gower's bat in, Absolutely. cheap and nasty to go with the rest of the set. Absolutely. So we're all spent up. That's ideal. Come on, matey. Right. Time for our teams to reunite. But will they be bowled over with each other's buys? Would you like to see what we've bought? Oh, we oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, We're going to we show can't you. can't wait. Here we go. Oh, oh hang, on, hang on, there's a bonus well. extra. OK, right. That's called a radio. Thank you very much. Wireless. Yeah. Navigation light. It's genuine, it's 1930. Can I ask you some money questions? Like, right, how much was that? 25. 25 
on that. Okay. How much is that? Well, that goes with that and that and that. That was and £210. That. Pounds. £210. That's a good buy. Wow. That's a good ah. buy. That's a very good buy. But everything's the same colour. It's this year's colour. We it's, bought on colour, haven't it's, we? I bought on colour, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I'm easily impressed. <laughs> very superficial. <laughs> right. Do you want to see some proper things? Yes, yes, I'd love to. Oh, no. Step this way. I'm, I'm losing Ooh. confidence in it now. I must admit, I'm beginning to worry a bit. Yeah. Right. I, mean, I go around the front door. Okay. I've got to tell you that some of the things we bought, we don't know what they are. No. Right. <laughs> right. David will be able to tell you. Well, yeah. Sure are, we are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? Three, two, one, go. I think we know what those are. <laughs> we'll leave it to the end. This yeah. is a bust of Sir Thomas More. Maybe. It's got the same hat. Yes. Yeah, no, no, that's why we're going for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. But, but the thing yeah. about this is, if you push the head back, the yes. back cave opens. <laughs> So that's quite good. <laughs> and, and what we've got, talking bats, what we've got here is a cheap, nasty, unpleasant beach cricket set. Yes. With a relevant sort of a bat. Ooh. The David Gower. No. Ray Nichols. I think we should get that out and show it in its full glory, don't you? Oh, well, okay. well it could be a fake. Oh, we're never going to get in there. There it is. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> it's lovely. And do you know what makes it so rare? It's unsigned. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And look at that. I and mean, this is our figurehead, oh, Charlie. She's splendid. Where did you find her? How much does she worth? She was. She was. Have a guess how much she was. How no. much she was? Don't I think me. she was um, £165. Oh. Come on. Um, he nodded as he'd seen it before. He's cheating. No, no, no. What did it cost? Oh. You absolute... I you promise you, I haven't got a clue what it cost. I haven't... It did. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Gower! <laughs> did it really <laughs> cost he, no. Yes, it'll cost no, 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 no. <laughs> but no, He knows these things. He's an expert. I think you've done well, chaps. <laughs> good luck. Right. See you at the auction. Um, yeah. All good. All good. Well, All you good. Me You'll be fine. Well, I don't know. I didn't Come on, want Gower. to buy Come on. Behind the backs of their rivals, they'll spill the beans. What do you think? <laughs> well, apart from losing confidence in ours, I mean, I, I, I'm sure their stuff's good. You got very excited about the camera, didn't you? Uh, I think that it's all about that camera. And if it's on the net and people pick up on that, that could make them a serious profit. Yeah. I'm quite encouraged. I, their lady, I thought, yeah. was, you know, is, it's a sort of complete... That's a quirk. It only looked like wood, I have to say, from a distance. Yeah, so who knows? Who's going to buy it? Not me. Wouldn't change anything we've got. No. <laughs> oh, well, I wouldn't know. What else were we going to buy? No, no, I'm very happy with what we bought. Yeah. Which, what about ours? which would you rather have? Oh, lot or their lot? Of course, ours. Yeah. Of course, ours. Good man. I love Are we going to win? I'm going, well, it's, it's in the bag. <laughs> After starting in Salisbury, our teams have shopped all round Hampshire, and now our sporting chaps, David and Nick, are motoring towards Sidcup for the grand finale. Have you ever been to Sidcup before? I have. I've been to Sidcup many, many times. How memorable was it last time? It was... Well, I think today's going to be very much the most exciting time I've been to Sidcup. Here's hoping, Nick. Do you think late? They're touring this wonderful metropolis. But you Here they come. Oh, listen, I can hear a tiger. Right. There they are. Greetings. Are you going to open the doors? Yes, I might as well. <laughs> See if we can get the handle on. Lord Gower, sir. On this trip, Charlie and David spent £397 on five auction lots. Come on in. Nick and Phil also bought five lots and spent every last penny of their £400. The man with the gavel is Alex Jenkins. What does he make of everyone's lots? The camera and lens is a fine item. It's a good-looking thing, even as an aesthetic in the corner. Got all the equipment. It's the, the most complete set I've seen in a long time. Very nice, should do good. The ship's head is a great-looking lot. It got attention as soon as it came into the auction. Lovely big statement piece, conversation piece, and it's what everyone wants. It'll go into a nice design, go into retail. I think that's going to be the surprise here at the auction. Right, time for the auction, which has buyers online, on the phone and in the room. Let's check the pulse. Quite exciting. Is there one? It hasn't been for a long time. <laughs> First up is David's chapati box. Hungry? Starts on the book here with me at £16.18 we need now. £16.18 is there, 2022 is yours, 24 now. 
Hang 22 on. in the room, 24 we need. Looking for 24. At £22, then, right. sir. Right. Not a great start to the proceedings. Well, you lost money. There's a certain corner about that, isn't there? <laughs> 392 is the silver plate box set. Deary me. <laughs> Next up, Nick's Regency inspired cornice. Start them at 30. 30 pounds in. There we go. 32, 34, 36. 30 Here we go. Here we go. 36 it is. At 36 pounds anywhere else now. Should be. For? At 36 pounds they go. 36. No. Uh, 15 pounds. <laughs> Don't celebrate someone else's failure. No, not very sporting, Mr. Ross. It's not Here enough to succeed. Your friends have to <laughs> fail. It's one of those, isn't it? <laughs> oh. Let's see if David and Charlie's German radio can do any better. 22's here, 24 pounds we're looking for. 24 on the back, 26, 28 yours. Yes. <laughs> there it is, 28 pounds there, oh, 30 we want. Three pounds up. At 28 pounds, 30 we need. At 28 pounds all done, at 28. And they're off the mark. Gosh. Could have been worse. If anyone hasn't got a partner, so... Can Nick and Phil's Oxbridge photo get them started? Eight pounds for it. Eight's there. Nine pounds needed now. Nine's in. Ten. No, ten. 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 It's That's overpriced. Well. 16. Here we go. Fourteen it is at fourteen pounds anymore. All done. At fourteen. Out for a googly. Bad luck, chaps. David, in cricketing terms, how would you think this is going? We are probably 40 for four at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we're lucky. And the navigation lamp light up the score for David and Charlie. Starts in straight in at 80 pounds. 85 we need now. Not bad. 80 pounds have 85 we need. 85 it is 90. 95. 100. 100. 100 it is. At 100 on the book, 110 we need. Just another ten. At one hundred pounds and profit, profit. selling at one hundred, one ten is in. I am out. At one ten in the room, one twenty we won. I at one hundred and ten, selling at one ten. Another win puts Team Gower in the lead. Well done, David. Yeah. 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 This is going to be very, very close. Let's see how Nick and Phil's Sir Thomas More bust will do. Sixty pounds on this one. Sixty I have. Sixty-five we need now. Ooh. Straight in at 60, 65 to the phone, 70. 70, 75. Here it's coming, it's coming. 75's in 80. Yes. 75 it is, 80 pounds we need. At 75 pounds and selling at 75. <sighs> Do you know, for one minute, I thought we were going to make a profit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a pattern. Another loss. They'll be back in the pavilion soon. You know, you said 40 for four. I think we just lost... Yeah, we just yeah. lost a couple more, though, yeah. yeah. David's Queen Mary model is next to go. It starts in yes. at 40. 35 pounds, 38 we need now. 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48, 50, 55, 60, 55 it is on my right. At 55 pounds all done, selling at 55. That's a respectable return. Uh, it profit. is profit. Oh, it's profit. No, it's it's it is mean, profit. Well done, mate. And well that lady. Next up, the cricket set. Hang on. Gower's batting for the wrong team. So we start with two. <laughs> that, that's 100. <laughs> what, one. <laughs> 50p. Oh, you've got the, <laughs> you've got the 50p. Got the 50p. Moving good, up to five. Good. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, he's, uh, he's got 17. 12. 14. Twelve. Oh, 15. 15's a nice number. 15. Have we got 15? 15 it is, 18's in. See, the ladies are going now. 18's there, 20 at the back. 22. 22, he's in. 24. Oh, we We've got more. 24. 26. You've just sold it. Come on, eight. 26. 28. Are there no phone? 30. No phone bids on this. No phone bids, surprisingly. 30. 32. 34. 36. 38. 40. 42. 44. 46. 48, 50, 50, 50, child's... they're mad for Gower. 50, 55, I'm 50 it money. is, at 50 pounds. What a good oh, bloke you are, gentleman. Selling. What a last chance, gentleman. are we all done? Thank you, at David. 50 pounds, 50 <laughs> oh, it is, well done. Bravo. Well, 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 <laughs> Whoops, that backfired for David, a 20 pound profit for the opposition. I'll have words with you, guys. What a star. Thank you so much. <laughs> there we go. 
Next up, David and Charlie's final lot, the auctioneer's favourite, the 19th century camera. And it starts off on the book here with me at 300. 310 we need now. 310 we need, 310, 320, 330. 340, 350. 360, oh, 370s, like it. 370s in the room so far. 380, 390. Genius, 400, genius, or 10, Ross, genius. Or 20, or 30. I told or 40, you, I'm quite excited. Or, 50, go. or 60, or 70, or 80, or 90. 500, 520, 540, 560, 580, 600, 620, I'll go. 620 is back in. 640, 660, 640 it is, thank you. At 640. Wow. Selling, all done. At 640. Go, 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 go. Well done. How's that? Crikey, a healthy profit or what? I'm still very disappointed. That should have gone for several thousand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all down to the last lot then. Phil and Nick's ship's figurehead. And we start straight in at 250, 260 what? needed. 260, 270, 280, 290, 300, 310, 320, 330, 340, 350, 360, 370 for the boat, 380, 390, 400, 410, 420, 430, 440, Next foot. 460, 460, yep, yeah. 470, 480, 490, 500, 500 take, 520, 540, 560. That makes people more. No, no. 580. 600. You're making more than we did on the camera. One more, man. Yes, it is. 600. 620. Oh, new bidder. New bidder. 640. 660. 680. 700. This is sensational. Shut up. 720. <laughs> 720. 740. At 740. All done. Selling. At 7.40. Oh. Well done, well done. Do you know what? I think they should make this just a one-lot program. <laughs> Listen, it is. <laughs> yeah, 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 true. Hey, well done, chaps. A good innings all round. That is against all <laughs> logic. <laughs> What was it, well, 7.40? It's, it's just, what's ridiculous is, it's just as illogical one way as some of the losses were the other way. <laughs> so, who's the winner? Let's find out, shall we? David and Charlie started with £400. After paying auction costs, they made a healthy profit of £304.10, leaving them with a total of £704.10p. Nick and Phil made an even bigger profit of £350.30, leaving them with a total of £750.30p and crowning them as today's winners. All profits go to children in need. Congratulations, you two. Oh, 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 you know what the difference was? Thank you. David Gower cricket bat. That's David so Gower true. true. Going on the rostrum true. and working <laughs> for you. I was excited. It was yeah. exciting. Yeah. Come on then. Right. Let's go. That's Thank fantastic. You so Off you go, much, boys. Charlie. Thank you, Nick. Well done. Wonderful. Well done, David. Well done, David. Cheers. Very good effort. Very good. Effort. Thank you. All the best. Time to hit the road for the final time. Oh, well batted. Cheers, Philip. They were great. Buddy. Good value. Yeah, good fun. I'm not entirely sure that I couldn't make a living. I am entirely sure <laughs> that you couldn't make a living doing this. Yes. Well, I can't make a living doing anything else, so I may as well do it uh, collecting nice pieces. They think it's all over. It is for now.